Lord, you're telling me to run around this church. God told you, you better. You think you're too prideful, you're going to miss out on what God's going to want you to do. This man called Jesus knows exactly what he's doing. It may be a mystery to us, and we talked about it a little bit. We ain't really got in foot, we can't really fully comprehend him. His ways are beyond our ways. He knows exactly what he's doing, but you can rest assured the plan he's got, just like for the plan for this boy born blind, was a perfect plan. Yeah. I could hear somebody now. Here's the way this generation would be. Lord, why do I have to go over here when there's something right here? Why? Well, I'll tell you, because he said to go over there. Sometimes we just wonder, God, why did you send me here? When you can send me over there. Because God said, I know what's right for you. See what I'm getting at? Some people want God to move, but they don't want to be obedient to what God tells them to do. God ain't going to leave you hanging out to dry. I told this story many times. Before I come up here, I never knew nothing about Pennsylvania. I didn't. I knew about two football teams. We throw them out the window. I knew about Amish. I thought that most people drove horse and buckies around and stuff in the big cities. And I knowed about the candy place. Oh, yeah, I knowed about that. <laughs> that was the first thing I looked up. When I, maybe I can smell that Hershey's key all the way over here. No, I didn't know. I thought to myself many times, Lord. I'll tell you, I'll just, I'll tell you, Lord, before I go anywhere, like, wouldn't Tennessee be a lot easier? <laughs> well, I could sit back in the Smoky Mountains and <laughs> just have it made. That's the reason God wouldn't send me there. But no, the Lord said, I had a plan for you in Pennsylvania. That's where he wanted me to go. Little did I know about this place. But at the same time, I had to be obedient and follow the footsteps of God. Because if I'd have went somewhere else, even if I would have stayed in the Carolinas, I would have been outside the will of God. The will of God was for me to come to Pennsylvania for this time and this purpose. Little did I know that, but sometimes we may not understand it, but all we got to do was be obedient, ain't it? God didn't call us to figure it out. He just called us to believe him and act upon that belief. I'm telling you right now, too many times we try to tell God, can't you do it this way? Can't you do it that way? No, God says, I'm going to do it a totally different way. People think, well, God, you're going to do it this way. Anybody ever said that? I believe God's going to do it this way. Wait just a minute. Get that out of your mindset. That ain't going to be the way God's going to do it. He's going to do it 360 degrees different than the way you expected it. I've always thought to myself, Lord, <laughs> all of us have, Lord, you can do it this way. This will be the easiest way. And the whole time God said it may be the easiest, but it ain't the perfect way. We want the perfect way, not the easiest way. Sometimes the easiest way ain't the right way. Oh yeah, that was a little Pools he could, probably could have watched in. But God said, I send you to this one, and that's where I want you to go. There was other rivers Naaman could have dumped in. But God said, I want you in the muddiest river of them all. You ever thought about that? It, showed, it made him humbled. showed his obedience. And God said, I can take the dirty rivers, and I can make a miracle out of them also. That's God for you this morning. This is a man called Jesus we're talking about. I'm telling you, people don't realize we've got an ever-present help in the time of trouble. I believe many times we miss more than we receive because people fail to act upon what he says to do. We miss out on the miracles. You're telling me God's got something with my name on it? I'm telling you this morning that God's got a miracle with your name all over it. I'm telling you he's got a blessing that you, not only you can't contain it, but the boats around you can't contain it. All you got to do is receive him. All you need today, you're in that boat. 
and you're thinking things are looking bad, all you need is a touch from Jesus. That's all you need. You don't need anything from the world. You just need a touch from a man called Jesus. They may give up on a cure. But let me tell you, but one touch can make the difference. Just one touch can make a whole difference. Think about in the Bible. Think about those that got that touch. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years she fought it. Give her life savings on doctor. But one day Jesus come passing through. She said, I must touch the hem of his garment. And she touched him and he was, she was made whole from that very moment. Uh, think about blind Bartimaeus. Here was a man, he was blind, but he cried out, Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. They told him to shut up and don't trouble the master. Let me tell you, when you really need a touch of God, you ain't going to pay attention to the critics, are you? When you need God to intervene, you're going to scream a little bit louder when they tell you to shut up. You're going to holler a little bit more. You're going to give all that lung power you got to get the touch of the master. And let me tell you, he done it and he received his sight. How about this man called Lazarus? Four days. Stinking in a grave. Mary Martha told Jesus, finally come on. He got there. Seemed like he was late, didn't it? He said, Lord, if you would have been here, our brother wouldn't have died. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. They said, we know there's a resurrection of the future. Jesus was said, I'm the resurrection of the now also. I'm the resurrection of the past. I'm the resurrection of the now. And I'm the resurrection of the future. He said, take me to his grave. He said, remove the stone. That very moment, think about it. They wouldn't know in bombing fluids back that time. He was stinking and he was decaying. Jesus said, Lazarus. I believe as soon as he said Lazarus, <laughs> that soul and spirit was coming back. Come forth. And I've told you this many times. I believe he called Lazarus by name because if he had said come forth, everybody in that graveyard would have come forth. He come forth, death could not hold him. That soul and spirit was reunited in that body. He said remove the grave clothes. Let me ask you. I've seen where man's trying to come up with a system, a machine to resurrect the dead. That'll never work. They're trying to get that smart, but it tells you where we're at in the end times. Well, if they even accomplish anything, it'll be demon spirits inhabited or something like that. I don't believe, you know, it just shows you how far mankind has crept. They're increasing in knowledge, but there's not only one resurrection. There's only one that can give life, and that's Jesus Christ this morning. Four days thinking in decaying. And yet... Can you imagine how bad it was decaying? Wouldn't look like we see today. I, the best example I can give you is when my half-brother was electrocuted. We could not embalm him. We had to bury him. As soon as they got him back, the next day we had to have a funeral and bury him. They had to put him in a bag inside of the coffin because within a day he was almost to the point of being rotten. The flesh. Because they could not embalm him. Can you imagine what it was like with Lazarus? But wait just a minute. He may have been decaying. But this man called Jesus was speaking. And as he was speaking, guess what? That decaying was putting that flesh back on as that soul and spirit was coming back into the body. That's the Jesus that we serve. That is the man called Jesus that we serve. And you're telling me there's not something too hard for him this morning? I'm telling you there's nothing too hard for God to do this morning. I'm telling you you need a miracle this morning. I'm telling you this morning today is the day. I don't care what you got need of this morning. He is more than able to do that which he says he can do. If he can raise the dead, surely he can heal your body. Amen. You see, by this man called Jesus, miracles are made.
The miracle itself didn't come from the clay or the water, but it come from the man called Jesus. He was saying, I can use anything I want to use to bring forth your miracle. I can use the dirt to bring forth a, pe a miracle. Think about it. I know it's Mother's Day. Let me get this in here. Uh-oh. Some of them worry about what I'm getting ready to say. But think about it, man. We was formed from a dirt. God took dirt and formed a man. And he took one of our ribs and formed the woman. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> can you imagine? How can you? A piece of dirt, and he called it man. A piece of a bone, and he called it a woman. You telling me if he can do that, what can he, can't he do? You ever look at all the beautiful animals? They're amazing to me how he created them. You ever stopped and looked to the splendors? Of, there's some glorious places in this world. I know it's been affected by sin, but there's still some glorious places in this world. There's some grand, majestic places around the world. And you think about every, all these mountain ranges and oceans that he formed. And you're telling me there's something too hard for him to do. Consider the snowflakes. Do you know there ain't two snowflakes? We'll be talking about that soon. <laughs> My order's in. <laughs> There's not, science, they'll tell you there ain't two snowflakes that are exactly alike. Why? Because there's a creator. Even identical twins, there's something different about them. There's something that sets them apart from the other twin. It may be hard for us to recognize, but there's something that sets them apart from another. Why? Because the intelligence of God. Don't tell me it's by random chance. Don't tell me it's evolution. <laughs> yeah, throw it. We didn't come from monkeys. Why ain't man growing tails today? Why ain't they growing wings and flying right now? If that was the case. No. We were designed by a creator God. Every one of us was a unique individual that he designed. Some of us, you know, I ain't going <laughs> to... Some people wonder about sometimes, don't you? <laughs> but, ever, but the fall has influenced many mankind. The fall is what got a hold of them. But yet one day, all this is going to be made new. One day, I tell people, we've got something splendorous looking for us. We've got something beyond the amazement of this world. I thought to myself, Lord, I'd like to have one glimpse into heaven. I've never been. I've heard people getting that privilege. I'd like to just spend just a few moments of time in heaven. You know, if, I, if the Lord would allow that, I don't know if I'd come back or not. <laughs> but I'd say, Lord, I'd probably beg him to let me just stay. But the thing is, we don't know. It's, I can tell you it's beyond our imagination because I've never been there. It's beyond our comprehension. It's amazing what God has prepared for us on the other side. But even all the amazements of heaven, it would not be heaven without Christ there. It would not be heaven without our Savior there. It wouldn't be that place we're looking for to that place till we get there. Let me tell you, heaven's amazing. But let me tell you right now, the first one I want to see in heaven is not those that's gone on before me. The first one I want to align to is my Savior. He's the first one that I want to see. Ain't that right? He's the first one I want to get to. He's the first one I want to run towards. I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to the day. I think every day, could this be the day that he comes again? Could this be the day that this man called Jesus uh, ascends again for his church? I believe it could be. Ain't you glad this morning? Uh, to get back on the subject just a little bit. 
It don't matter what it's been. 